They got Resident Evil 2 minis? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, viewers. Hello, internet. Hello, internet. So. I've always... Well, I tried doing this once. This is pre-show, right? Yeah, we're I'm still pre-show. Anything. Oh. Yeah. Um, do a one-shot that's basically just Resident Evil 2. <laughs> And you got to go through the police station and down to the laboratory and the whole deal. I, I did it as a one-on-one when mm-hmm. I was in Korea with one of my like higher level students. His English was super good. And yeah. I had him basically in a one-on-one class for a while. Nice. So I'm like, uh, I feel like running D and D and I think it's a good opportunity for you to practice different weird phrases and stuff. And like, you can get it. It actually so, like, is. And it's a really good oh, way yeah. to actually well, I do it all the time. Of- Would you do uh Mr. X is like a, like a weird souped up flesh I, I golem. Did, I did. Uh, it was Resident Evil One, so I did it in the mansion. Oh, okay. So all you need is like zombie dogs and a giant snake. Yeah, and it's like and a couple zombies. Exactly. Yeah, and it was more about figuring out puzzles in the rooms than it was mm-hmm. about combat. It was more like figuring out like where do I have to move this statue and how do I get the shotgun off the thing without the ceiling collapsing on me. Blah blah. Like all so this. more puzzles. Yeah. Yeah, which nice. was a good good for one one on one game. Yeah, I've run a uh, Legend of Zelda game before. Yeah, in in fourth edition, that was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just uh, break break uh, pottery. The entire session, <laughs> the entire session is just me spinning with my sword and breaking mm-hmm. pottery. That's one where it would be great to do like that inventory system. I think. Like, if you're going to do any kind of video game, like, like, and, and if you want to play up the video game factor of it. Well, I mean, Resident Evil is also... Oh, yeah. Inventory management. The same. Yeah. That is, that is the name of the game. Inventory. That's why I hate inventory management. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I that is always the name give, of the game. So I always give my groups a bag of holding very early on because I don't want to think about it. Yeah. Um. So in that system, what things like bags of holding and stuff do is they just give you like a, a ton of slots. Um, and the way I would do it is uh, basically because normally it goes like by weight or like by how like clumsy something is or whatever. So like a 10 foot pole might actually take up two slots. Um, but I think what I would do is just say uh, everything takes one slot and some items are stackable. And they stack up to a certain amount. There you go. Just like in video games. And money, money, money weighs nothing. Money takes up no slots, weighs nothing. Mm. It's, it's, mm. so the the way I would do this system is specifically for a, a video game type game. Yeah, because when, you know, in Stardew, just to sound, because that's something that has really strict inventory control. Yeah, but I mean, like, money, if you take a look at any... Doesn't... Any RPG, like, usually yeah. they don't track money as part of your encumbrance in no. a video game RPG. No. I just... Bank account. Yeah. I mean, but, obviously, the, uh, the way around it is that you you don't give players coins. <laughs> you you give them, like, goods or, like, trade bars or something. And you're like, okay, well, yeah, this, this bar of gold is worth 50 gold, but it counts as an item in your inventory. I, I, you could see that. Yeah. yeah. But how are you going to spend 50 gold in one go? Who's going to break that for you? Um, Unless you have a hyperinflated uh, economy in your world. Well, I think. Where 50 gold is just like, oh, whatever. I feel like historically what they would do is they would actually like chop off pieces of it. Yeah. Like they would take they a trade bar out. and like if, if they only do 25, they would just chop it in half and say like, okay, I got 25 gold now. Here, have and they'd weigh it. <clears throat> yeah. Seems like a lot of work. Well, commerce is a lot of work. <laughs> Hence why we made paper money. Paper money. money. Yeah. Oh, and that was actually money. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually something that I did when I went to Denver is I went to the uh there's a currency museum at the reserve there. Um, because a couple years ago I went to the mint, and that was really cool. Nice. And then um Oh, did you yeah, have to go through the uh, Illuminati airport? <laughs> Denver has like a really crazy airport, right? They have a really cool airport. I don't know no, what you're talking about. No, it's definitely Illuminati 
like space no. vampires. Um, no. Like anything Alex Jones is about is probably in that airport. No, it's a really cool airport. It's a really nice airport. Yeah, because uh, the Illuminati actually, owns it. Well, they're actually also working on construction. <laughs> they're 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 fixing it up right now. Um, but no, it's a really nice airport. I really like the Denver airport. I've There's gone there so many as much. Demons. So many demons I've... at that airport. <laughs> interdimensional i just i need to do this before i forget <laughs> do what take my medicine oh medicine <laughs> yes sick bruh i don't know <laughs> When you say medicine, I don't know if you mean actual literal medicine or like. Let's not get into it. <laughs> actual literal medicine. I mean, it's all actual little, literal medicine as far as I'm concerned. Mm hmm. There we go. No, I mean, I mean the pills that are prescribed by the doctor that I have to go pick up at Rite Aid. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Sorry everyone. About that. Welcome to the pre-show, uh, although um, we should probably get started. Yeah, we should. So, going live in five, four, three, two, Zero. one. Coming up on episode 147, D&D Essentials Kit, Acquisitions Incorporated, Harry Potter Wizards Unite, and much, much more on the 8-Bit Adventures podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the 8-Bit Adventures Podcast, bringing you a special birthday edition episode <laughs> of uh, the latest and greatest geeky news of the past week. I am your host, Sean Hayes, and with me are my exemplary co-hosts, as always, Courtney Bolin. Hey, everybody. And Josh York. You know what? I'm a little disappointed that you didn't rhyme your intro this week. Um... I can't do that every week. Come on. You know, it it's his birthday. Like, give him some, give him some slack. I can't. I'm, I'm not joking. No slack to be given. I'm not joking. I can't come up with that stuff every week. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we are back. Uh, we have um, some news this week, mostly D and D related, uh, yeah. because we had two uh, two releases this week. Um, yes. So yeah, but uh, yeah. Um, of note, uh, for those who backed the Critical Role minis Kickstarter, uh, you should be what? getting your minis. If you haven't gotten them already, they should be arriving sometime soon, as yeah. I got mine today. Yeah. So for the folks on stream, shasha! This is Vox Machina. You can tell because there's a big old bear right there. Yeah, drink it. The Mighty Nine. And because <laughs> I was a backer, I got uh, basically uh, the four Pumat Souls. Tarion, uh, and and Doty. Nice. As bonus ones. Nice. So. Yeah, I cannot wait to see those in person. Oh, also, uh, I think they included Shikasta you, in the Mighty Nine. I'm like, and if you leave them on your kitchen table, um, tomorrow I will be just drooling over them for a few minutes when I go to let Monty. Gross. <laughs> well, they're still in the box, so it'll wipe away. They're still in the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah um but yeah why don't we uh why don't we get right into uh the news yeah so uh big thing this week the D D essentials kit released at target it's a yeah. currently a target exclusive until september when it releases mm -hmm. elsewhere yes. uh josh and i both picked this up it is really good you guys <laughs> I can't pretty, pick it. Pretty nice. I can't pick it up till Friday because I don't get paid till Friday. Ah. Um, yeah. Of interesting note, I went note, to go get it, but I didn't have enough. <laughs> is that I think this is the first official D and D product that includes 
uh, codes to unlock the same material on D and D Beyond. I didn't even notice. Yeah, Which is uh, they, they have like a little uh, like one sheet in the back um, mm. where it's got QR codes. Um, oh wow! Know, and then basically like a like a, a, codes, a I probably like, threw it away. Well, and there's also like a product key so that you can enter in the product and it unlocks the adventure for you. Mm. Um, oh, which, like, in it, Beyond. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, also includes a code for fifty percent off of the player's handbook on D and D Beyond. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Not so bad. Yeah, folks uh, that don't already own it uh, and would like to purchase their own copy of the player's handbook uh, and want a code, let me know because I already own it. <laughs> we already own everything on the. And and on I the I had offered it to Courtney, but she's already buying her own essentials kit apparently, yeah. so she doesn't need it. Uh, yeah, I yeah I. <laughs> are you gonna DM a, a game for somebody? What are you getting the essentials kit for? I'm thinking about There's... it. I'm thinking about it. With thinking this about... adventure from the Essentials Kit, do you have a group? I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm cool. still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Do it. Uh, it what's also nice? A good adventure. Um, yeah, yeah, the adventure is great. Uh, the adventure is set in Fandolin. So what's cool is if you have the starter kit, you can actually mix and match elements of the two adventures. Yep. Um, so that's super cool because that's a great adventure. Although there's some kooky elements in there. Yeah, but you Clark. know what? I, it's like I love Clark. It's <laughs> the <laughs> I, he, he basically is just Jacob <laughs> when I play. Clark. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. yeah. He's great. Um, that starter kit adventure is like a perfect one to five adventure. Yeah. It gives you, it gives you a bit of everything as far as like locations and enemies and quests. And it's, it's really nice. Yeah. And it's really well laid out and it's fun. I've run it for a few groups now and, uh, it's always been really nice. And I'm impressed with this essentials kit with how much it just how much is in the adventure. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. It's only twenty five dollars. Well, I'm just and this is just with the adventure itself, not even everything else in it. Mm-hmm. Just the adventure itself has so much in it. So many locations, yeah, so many quests, so many different things to do. I just like so many different maps. Mm-hmm. I was like, holy moly, there's a lot. Yeah. Way mm-hmm. way more than even the starter kit. And the circuit has a lot, so I was just like, holy crap, that's um, really good. One of the cool things is they kind of flesh out the sidekick system that they introduced in the Unearthed Arcana article. So that way, if you're only... It, it kind of cheats a little bit. So, like, they said, like, oh, we'll have rules for playing, like, you know, with one player. But the rules are, like, they get a sidekick, uh, which is kind of like, well, okay, then you're just really, like, including NPCs to go along with the party. Which, like, that's already a thing that people know how to do. Yeah. Um, but it's nice, like, to have those rules fully fleshed out um, because they're meant to also be like, you know, if you want to have, you know, like a like, you know, an animal companion, quote unquote, but not having a ranger in the party, quote unquote. <laughs> or even if you do and want to make it a useful animal companion. <laughs> uh, uh, that And that that's coming from Jeremy Crawford, <laughs> that, that you can use those rules for animal companions. Uh, but yeah, uh, what I like is if you want to do like a little more of an oddball game um i mean i've looked over those the essentially they're they're classes um mm-hmm. they're pretty fleshed out like to the point that like you could probably run a player character using like one of the sidekick classes and still oh, yeah. not really feel underpowered compared to like you know say the fighter or something yeah um which means that since you can pick any like creature that has cr1 or less it kind of opens up the design space so that, you know, if like, let's say that you're playing with little kids and they have, you know, wild imaginations. They want to be like, well, I want to be a pony or I want to be a, an owl or something like I want to be a talking owl. And uh, from experience, and, yes, they uh, want to be anything, everything that's not in the rules. Yeah. This allows you to do that um, because One of my it, favorites was, can I be a flaming skeleton head guy? Sure. Fine. Yes. I allowed it. <laughs> that, that's yeah. basically a flame skull. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other one was I basically want to be King from Tekken, which is the Jaguar head wrestling guy. In- oh, well, that's just a tabaxi. <laughs> kind, yeah. kind of, but not really. Yeah. He's like, no, I want to be like a human, but oh. I have a Jaguar head. I was like, sure. I fine. would still use the tabaxi rules and just say, like, <laughs> that, yeah, that you do that. Or whatever. And not mm-hmm. let him have claws or, or flavor the claws as, like, just really powerful unarmed strikes. Other or than something. that, every kid wants to be a flipping T flame. Yeah. Yes. Because it's weird and different. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, yep. and they want to be edgy. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
you know, yeah, like if somebody wants to, be, you know, be a wolf, you could let them do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know, because people are crazy. They got crazy ideas. Uh, and this opens it up for that. And I, I really like that. Well, I know um, what you, I was thinking you could do with this is basically turn your D&D game into a JRPG. And so you have your created character and then you pick your whatever, two or three other party members with you and you play all of them. Yeah. And then you play all their turns and it's, it'd be like playing a JRPG basically. Yeah. It'd be, that'd be a pretty cool way to do it too. Yeah. That's I one of the things. Love to, I would love to be the player of that. Yeah. Right, they, uh, right my alley. they, they talk about how, you know, if it's like a little more experienced player or a player that's comfortable, uh, like you can give the reins over to the, the sidekicks for them and have them run both kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, 100% you could do like a, like a JRPG style party game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they uh, come with like a whole box of cards with like a little. So one of the things that I love is I love little fiddly bits that you set up and then have practical purposes. So like the fact that there was a little box that you actually like fold out and then set up yeah. and it's the container for the cards. Um, cards for magic items cards for there's one card for a magic charm. Uh <laughs> There's cards for NPCs. There's cards for quests. There's cards for uh, initiative order, right? So it's just like, you know, so everybody figures out what turn they come up in initiative and you hand them, you know, like one, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Here's the sidekick card. Yep. Uh, What do we got here? It looks like some magic items. Magic items, yeah. More magic items. Yep. And those Uh, are all just, are they already perforated to pull apart? Yes, yeah, they are perforated. Okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, like, conditions. Uh, I'm conditions. like, do we have super to have helpful. dexterity? Yeah. Status conditions. And, Status conditions are super helpful. and it tells you, like, here's what that actually means when yes. you're restrained. Does it have, like, the different levels of exhaustion? Uh, it does not. Uh, I didn't okay. see that. No, it, it, it doesn't have the, exhaustion. It also comes with a uh, screen. It yeah. might be on the screen. Yeah, the, I don't know. So the DM screen, uh, it's a little flimsy. It uh, is a little. So It's um, not as nice as, like, my, my good, like, 5th edition one yeah. with the big dragon on it yeah. that I never used. Yeah. <laughs> uh comes with yeah, a whole bunch of, of cards character sheets mm-hmm. uh comes with a set of dice so courtney <laughs> you, you can feed your dice habit with that um yeah the, the dice are a little on the plain side they're all the same color it's just like a generic translucent red um yeah, which it, that's map. fine i actually need a ruby set uh double-sided map of the sword here's coast your northern sword coast yep nice. and then here's the town of phandalin yeah Nice. Cool. I was looking to see if they made any changes from uh, Lost Mines to see like if they, they mentioned they like the red brand, spots. the red brand hideout or anything like that. And I was like, oh, ooh, ooh. it wasn't Let's labeled see. on there. It was not. Yeah. I was looking for it. So, yeah. Uh, and then it includes like kind of a light version of the rules. Yeah. Very light. But yeah, yeah. it's there. I do like I, I like the binding. Honestly, though. very honestly, light, but it's there. <laughs> that's all you need. Especially, and the way... There's, there is so much of the PHB that I don't read through or use or ever look at. Yeah. I don't even own a Dungeon Master's Guide. For me, it's like personally not a useful book because there isn't much in it for me. Mm-hmm. And then you get the actual adventure itself. Yeah. With, it's just so much, so much, so yeah. much. There's monsters in the back. All, all the monsters you need to run in it are yep. in the back of it which uh, is has nice. some new monsters yeah which so you cool. don't need a monster manual all oh, cool. your all yeah. your monsters that you need are in the back of here which is oh, a nice, nice it's definitely a plus yeah the intention for this set is that everything that you would need to run that adventure is in this box look at this and like the, every page there's a map yeah I, I still can't get over it yeah <laughs> it's just crazy and the That's intention so is much. um that you would you would pick this up you know, and maybe run it with your some friends um, and see what you think of it. And because it, it's a relatively low cost entry. And then if yeah. you really like it, then to decide, OK, well, we'll pick up a player's handbook. We'll pick up, you know, Dungeon that's Master's cheaper. Guide, that's teacher than, that's teacher. That's cheaper <laughs> than a than a PHB. Yes. Yeah. That's 40, 40 bucks for a player's handbook. 40 or 50. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. For, and 25 bucks for this. Yep. You're going to hold venture. You're getting uh, the basic essential rules. Uh, you're getting all these extra little a whole nice adventure fun to things. be played uh, to be played with. Like it's it's ready to go. That's, I mean, and if you're playing weekly or even bi-weekly, whatever, like yeah, 
yep. three hour sessions say that's gonna last you six months oh yeah i was gonna say i was thinking yeah. about six months yeah depends it depends on your pace and all that and yep. what, oh yeah and your group but yeah you, and I mean, if you combine it so you could here's what you could do a one up you get the starter kit and the essentials kit for the same price as a player's handbook basically yeah. Yeah. So now you get way more content, and it's all based in the same town and area of the yep. Sword Coast. So you have all these different quests and things you can do, and you'll mm-hmm. have like two storylines going on at the same time. So that would give your players options of like which story. That's I would like that. It's like I like to give players like weird. It's nice to have that little choose. yeah. But yeah, like you could do that too. Yeah, you get uh, both of those things at Target, by the way. Super good, super good purchase. Yeah. I mean, I was excited just for the cards alone. Like, for the <laughs> cards and the map and the screen. Uh, and then the adventure, you know, the adventure is really good. Um, I am disappointed. And we were we were joking about this last night. Uh, they they talked about, like, a dog sidekick in, like, the, the Arnold oh, yeah. Arcana article. And they kind of hinted at it, like, during the, um, the Descent event. And sadly... There is no dog sidekick uh, statted out. Uh, however, they do tell you like it's really easy to to build one um, as long as there's stats for like a wolf or a dog or something in the monster That's stat easy. block in the adventure. Um, or if you're like us and you have access to a monster manual, you can just be like, okay, dog, all right, and then I'll just you know use sidekick. Oh this. yeah, I, at this point, I would just like make up the stats in my head. Yeah, like I know about what it should be for what level you're at. So like. Pretty much. Make it, work. it should have more hit points than a kitten. Well, here's the thing. Uh, you only come up... <laughs> or you, should you would, you would only need to come up with the base stats, because otherwise uh, the sidekick levels are treated like class levels. Uh, so it's like, you know, as they gain more levels, it's it tells you... It, it's literally like a, like a class um, table that you would mm-hmm. find for, like, you know, the ranger, the fighter, whatever. Um, and they get really cool abilities. I mean, they're they're really I haven't, awesome. looked, I haven't really looked in it. That Let's much. uh, I'll, I will uh, <laughs> get yours. Yeah. I've fallen down the dice rabbit hole again. Oh no! Amazon is Don't dangerous. Don't do it. You need one set. That's it. I am a dice goblin, there, man. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. Just because no, you are doesn't mean I you're good. Love oh, you know I think dice. it's in the rules and not the adventure. Loves me dice. Yeah, loves I love my set of dice. There we go. Uh, They're great. <laughs> so, like, the expert in particular uh, can do help as a bonus action. Hmm. Um, and then at higher levels, uh, level 2 gets cunning action, expertise at level 3. Um... Extra attack at level six. Oh, that's the thing. So in this book, all the sidekicks only go up to level six. Um, so you would have to kind of look at the Unearthed Arcana article to go past that point. Mm. Um, but eventually they get like Inspire. So they get like Bardic Inspiration and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they're super helpful. Warriors, uh, they get um, basically like the protection trait like the protection uh combat or fighting style where it's like you mm-hmm. can uh impose disadvantage on somebody that attacks a creature next to you um second wind improved critical extra attack for spellcasters you pick like essentially healer or like wizard is that what they call it healer or mage uh and that determines like their spell loadout basically but yeah, it's cool. I like it. Uh, I hope that they eventually publish like higher level sidekick stats to make them official. So, but uh, yeah, I, it it makes it, the adventure only goes up to level six, so it makes sense why they only fleshed out that portion. So, yeah, uh, the other book that finally came out uh, yeah. is the Acquisitions Incorporated book. So, yeah, which looks awesome. Yeah, I, I, so I do enjoy Penny Arcade's art style. Uh, and this book, a lot more colorful, I feel like, like sort of brighter, more vibrant colors than 
you typically see on a D and D book. Can I, can I see turn the spine? To, okay, good. It matches. It does D&D. match. Yeah, okay, it's got so all the official branding and everything. I may um, get it just for that. Yeah. Uh, so this was all so my books must match. Yeah, we have to. We have talked about this before, but this was a collaboration. So yeah. it was written by Penny Arcade and then kind of uh, public. It, to put it into video game terms, it was developed by Penny Arcade and then published by Wizards of the Coast, as opposed uh-huh. to developed and published in house. Um, yeah. So what this details is, uh, it's kind of a campaign setting within a campaign setting. So it's like how to run an Acquisitions Incorporated campaign within Forgotten Realms or elsewhere. Um, and uh, it basically your franchise, uh, as your, your party gains uh, levels and gains in power, uh, your franchise grows with you to match that. Um, and it includes uh, different rules on various functions within the corporation that your character has um so uh largely drawing from um like the c team campaign so they talk about uh so they have the four roles from that game and in addition to four new roles so you have documenter hordes person decisionist cartographer secretarian which is kind of about like uh communicating with people so like at level one, you get a, a sending stone that the other half connects to the, the uh, home office. Um, there's the occultant, which is all about kind of uh, tracking kills that the party has made and like the value of those kills to the franchise. It's a little weird. It's, so it's kind of like uh, almost like a forensic scientist meets uh, almost like fate accountant, <laughs> <laughs> like karmic accountant. Kind of a thing. Uh, Obviator, which is um, uses a lot of alchemy type stuff. And then uh, Loremonger, which is um, you basically walk around with like a microphone uh, and then record stuff. Okay. Um, but you at various ranks within the franchise, you get additional benefits. You like um, and at level one, you get an, you get like a common magic item that then improves in power as you go up. So, like the Hordes Master, which is probably one of my favorite ones, uh, exemplified by one Kithris Draub in the C Team game. Um, so, at level two, um, you get a living loot satchel, which functions as a bag of holding. Uh, See, the word living there kind of makes me nervous. It is a magical being that safeguards the franchise's funds and valuables. Its innards are connected to a secure coffer within head office's vault in Waterdeep, uh, to which the satchel periodically transfers the franchise's wealth. Uh, but it's with a sleight of hand check, you can transfer any amount of your franchise funds back to the satchel. So essentially you can skim from the top or, or embezzle <laughs> funds from home office to put it back into your bag. Yay, embezzling fun. Uh, Where's... Oh, and at, like at, at franchise rank three, it upgrades to also uh, replicate Leoman's secret chest, which is a great spell where like you basically That's you take the... a full size chest, you kick it into the ethereal plane and you then have like a little tiny chest that you can tap to then summon the chest back and put stuff in or take stuff out. Um, it, and it says, thanks to head office striking deals you don't know about with extra planar creatures you really don't know about or don't want to know about. Uh, there is no chance for the spell to just, like, end. So you get it, like, in perpetuity. Um, hmm. At rank four, it turns it becomes, like, a portable hole instead of a bag of holding. So uh, cool things like that. Um, it really plays into, like, tool proficiencies. So you get, like, free tool proficiencies uh, and you do stuff with them. Um, Decisionist is fun. It's all about uh, whenever the group... Jacobin would love this one. It's whenever the group has to take a vote, uh, all of your powers influence voting within the group uh, oh, to gosh. the point that like you get, you just automatically get extra votes. If somebody's not present, you get their votes. <laughs> like you get to make votes for oh, them. Uh, your special item is like a coin that you can use uh, that like you control the outcomes of the coin. So, it's like, a people... Janice coin. You always call heads and... Yes. Uh, but it's like, you know, 
Otherwise, like it doesn't have any special properties other than you dictate what it lands on <laughs> kind of a thing. Um, and then it, it also comes with a level one through six adventure in the back where uh, it starts in water deep with an earthquake. And uh, it assumes that um, people are either being recruited by Ack Inc or are interested in becoming an intern for Ack Inc. And like you meet Omen, you meet Jim Dark Magic. You possibly meet Viari uh, as you as you sort of work your way through orientation and then get sent out on your first mission. Um, it includes rules intern. for it includes rules for uh, running your franchise uh, and getting basically a home base. That as you upgrade, you get different effects you can add to your home base. Um, it doesn't get into the nitty gritty like a lot of stronghold books do, where it's not like, oh yes, it is four stronghold spaces and each stronghold space is twenty feet by twenty feet by ten feet. And includes these features. Um, it's more like, you know, you might get an abandoned lighthouse. You know, work with your DM to come up with what it looks like kind of a thing. The previous owners might have been killed by pirates. They might have been eaten by a Gru. Eh, not really sure, but Ack Inc. decided well, to offload it to you for a deal. Yeah. Um, you know, it might be a boat. It might be a broken down cart. You know, it might be a tavern. Um, and... Uh, it, it gives a lot of leeway and creativity to work between the DM and the players. Um, there's It also d- uh, details some interesting downtime activities that you can run as a franchise. Uh, they're very corporate-minded, so it's like running a marketing yeah. campaign, uh, engaging in um, schmoozing as opposed to carousing. Um, there's uh, philanthropic uh, endeavors in case your marketing campaign goes south. Uh, <laughs> And uh, my, wow, I, I think so one of my favorite ones... Damage control. Yes, damage control. One of my favorite ones is uh, team building exercises, which, uh, if successful, allows you... Is this you... trust falls? <laughs> yes, which allows you, like, and it really plays up the role-playing aspect. So it's, like, kind of, like, look at your other, you know, players, like, bonds and stuff like that. Pick something that, you know, you uh, you might not agree with, and then you're going to have to work on that together. And that's, like, the team building exercise. Um but uh, if if you're successful, um, you get cool things like uh, uh, enhance ability for like a single check or a portion of a, a scene or something like that, hmm. um, which is essentially advantage on ability checks related to a specific ability score. Um, so, yeah. Um, and it, a lot of those it uses, um, it'll like tie into various uh, organization roles. So like if you're doing a marketeering campaign, um, you know, like a decisionist might get a bonus on certain roles, uh, and a documenter might get a bonus on certain roles and they do it as like a complicated. So like, uh, different people will have to make checks and your success or failure is based on the number of checks you succeed on as opposed to a single check at the end of the downtime. So it's like, uh, it'll, you know, it'll say like, well, you have to draft up the campaign. So you might have a documenter do that. You might have to, um, you know, work with the public to try and figure out how to best present it. So you might have your secretarian do that. And then you might have to, uh, at some point, like come to a conclusion on whether to pivot your campaign or not. Uh, and your decisionist might get a bonus for pivot. that. Pivot! Pivot! Yeah. So, um, I really dig it. Uh, I do like a lot of these new items and stuff. There are, uh, stat blocks for everybody's favorite Ack Inc. personalities. Um, or uh, some vehicles and other items that have shown up, like the battle balloon, a mechanical beholder. <laughs> that just uh, sounds terrifying. It was, it's essentially a flying beholder mech that they used uh, to pilot the Underdark. Yeah, um, that just that sounds terrifying. Sounds rad to me. Uh... So monsters include the keg robots, um, clockwork dragon, chaos quadrupod, and they have stats for um, basically omen sisters, pendragon bee stinger, uh, Brahma, oak true strike, walnut, kathris, rosy, dinar, flabbergast, viari, morgane, omen and jim. So now if you decide that you want to go to Waterdeep, and punch Omen drawn in the face. There's rules for that. So, 
Uh, if you decide that you don't want to become part of Acquisitions Incorporated, but perhaps be a rival to it, <laughs> there's there you can totally do that too. Um, but yeah, and it also has suggestions for what you're doing like outside of Faerun. Because um, obviously, Ek Inc. is like kind of tied to the Forgotten Realms. But uh, as recent adventures have shown, they have expanded beyond that uh, into like Ravnica and other places. So um, it, there, it does open it up so that, you know, if you're like on Eberron, you could say, oh, well, we're recently established in Eberron here. So we're like the first Ek Inc. franchise and we're going to set out and do stuff with home office. Um and uh, at, like, rank four, you get um, limited planar capabilities. So, like, you can have an outpost on, like, the Plane of Fire, like, in the City of Brass or, or other places like that. Um, hmm. So, yeah. Stuff that I might I might poach some of the concepts for Tales of Jamora. Uh, for for the, the Oak Breeze crew. <laughs> <laughs> kind of make them analogous to Ak Inc. So, yeah. Um... I, I'm thoroughly pleased, uh, and I dig it. If anything, to have like VR just randomly show up in a game, just be like, "What ho!" And uh, you know, smite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here's another. So they give a bunch of uh, custom spells, like new spells, uh, ones mm-hmm. that uh, basically Jim uses all the time. Um, doves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no doves, actually. Oh, uh, don't get this book. But Judge. they include they include a new component for spells, which is uh, royalties. So this is basically if you're casting one of Jim's spells, uh, as part of the casting of the spell, money is transferred from your person to Jim. So you pay magical royalties in order to use any of his spells. That's kind of uh, and I think it's with an Arcana check you might be able to like sleight of hand it so that somebody else pays the royalty for you. And then it gives like a specific cost. So in order to cast like Jim's magic missiles, it costs uh, one gold per spell level <laughs> in order to cast that spell. Um, and it's also instead of auto hitting, you roll attack rolls. And if it crits instead of like the standard, like rolling two dice and doubling it or whatever, it's you roll 5d4. Uh, but if you roll a one, you it, it blows up in your face and you take damage. <laughs> yeah. It's great. I, I, I really like the introduction of this uh, new sort of component idea, uh, even if it's like a weird like you pay royalties to <laughs> to Jim Dark Magic kind of a thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say if uh, any resident wizards in, in groups <laughs> uh, think of that and want to come up with their own spells and then and then assist and then put royalties on them that might be uh something interesting since uh one of our resident wizards seems to always be strapped for cash <laughs> yeah so um true yeah i would say if you're a fan of uh the Ak Inc podcasts uh by all means pick this up it's really yeah. good i'm uh, looking forward to looking through the book um yeah yeah i'll leave it out for you when Thank you come you. over Thank you. So, uh, up next, Toy Story 4 and Aladdin are both out. Lion King comes out pretty soon. Um, I haven't really heard much. I, I've heard Toy Story 4 was good. I really haven't heard a whole lot from Aladdin, aside from, like, it's better than the trailer made it out to be. But, like, Disney's not exactly uh, uh, proclaiming about how well it did at the box office, so. Yeah, I yeah. I still i think i think disney should have spread their stuff out i think they released too much too soon absolutely as you were saying the other night sean it's it's there's a marvel fatigue and now there really is a disney fatigue like a disney pixar fatigue i'm like just think over the past so like what april was 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 april when uh dumbo uh, end game came out uh yeah something like that I think so. Yeah, <laughs> something April. around there. Yeah. But yeah, so so Dumbo was in February. So if you think like the past six months, Dumbo, Endgame, um, and now we've got Aladdin, Toy Story 4, Lion King. It's coming um, up. Captain Marvel. Yep. 
like six films. I yeah. remember when it was like one Disney film, like at Thanksgiving every year mm-hmm. or maybe every other year. Um, I'm also, I don't know how I feel about essentially like re- essentially re-releasing all these animated classics using this like sort of photorealistic animation style as opposed to coming up with new stories and even if you're going to do digital animation doing still like a flat 2d style um yeah i don't know it makes me sad i mean lilo and stitch was the last uh kind of um cell animation princess and the frog wasn't uh oh you know what i thought that was the last you might be right yeah 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 but you mean like those were even done like, like I don't I don't think they were done with cells. I think they were done digitally, but still like two D or, or probably yeah. By, um, by that point, the game was probably all digital. yeah. But it's like Disney. I mean, Disney has a great aesthetic. Why not utilize that instead of? Mm-hmm. You know, um, because like what we're seeing now is uh, there were a bunch of articles talking about Lion King and how like oh animation's come so far that it's making it look like real life and it's like. Well, that's not the point of animation. That's the point not is, the point of animation. You can do whatever you want. Like you can use whatever style you want. Uh, like it doesn't have to be limited to look like real life. Um, so I don't know. Or uh, please leverage more uh, uh, Miyazaki films then, if you're not going to do it <laughs> Disney. He's done. I thought probably. I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, geez. There's another guy who does video, uh, movies a lot like uh, Miyazaki, I forget his name. Uh, probably one of my favorite um, anime movies. It's called... Um... Toriyama. <laughs> no, no. Disney should work with Toriyama. <laughs> they should. They, they should. should. Do a Chrono Trigger movie. <gasps> that could go for... That could be a Disney story easy. That could work. That could be a collab between <laughs> Disney, Square, Nintendo... Yeah, they already got something going on with stupid Kingdom Hearts, so yeah, why not? Yeah. Ah, jeez. Uh, it's called like A Boy and His Beast or something, but it's a really good animated film. It's very much in the kind of Ghibli mm-hmm. um, aesthetic. I would recommend <laughs> checking out. It's a really great movie. Nice, very nice. Like I would at this point, I would rather have a really well done. <laughs> kind of like Disney Square collaboration due to Chrono Trigger than a Nintendo uh was it Illumination collaboration to do Super Mario Brothers. So whatever whatever studio does minions, that's who's working on Super Mario. Is there a Super Mario movie? Yeah. Oh really? I didn't yeah, there's one in the works, yeah. I hope it's as good as the one in the nineties. Uh which fun fact, Disney did that one. Uh, and that's why they never talk about it anymore. Neither Nintendo nor Disney wants to talk about it anymore. <laughs> they need to get John Leguizamo in on this. Get him. He needs to be the voice of Luigi. I mean, well, oh, dear Jesus. see, the thing is, I think him now would be a good Luigi. Because, like, the whole point of no, Mario and Luigi... I want John Leguizamo from uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's Romeo and Juliet. That's the John Leguizamo I want. Have you ever seen that yes. Romeo and Juliet movie? It's yeah. awesome. Um, it's the, so good. The, the, no, Jir. <laughs> have, have you seen it, Courtney? Yes. They have pistols with the word rapier engraved yes, in the side. Yes, I yeah. have. It takes place in L.A. It's awesome. It's a train wreck. No, it's the best thing ever. No, it's, it is a train wreck. Final awesome. Fantasy VIII, the movie. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can That's think of whenever weird. I hear, whenever I hear like guns with, with rapier in, in place on the side. <laughs> That's all I can think of is Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, it's, be like, yeah. well, that's, yeah. I'm gonna say it's um, about yeah. like memory loss and time travel and time traveling witches. It's weird. So Macbeth, kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, God, where was it going? Oh, um, yeah, with the Super Mario stuff. Um, yeah, because the whole point of the Mario Brothers is that they're supposed to so. According to Nintendo, when they first made Super Mario Brothers, they were intended to be like middle aged, kind of unattractive Italian guys from Brooklyn. The um, Super Show got nailed that. And you know what? what? Super Mario Brothers Super Show is a national treasure, and I will not hear anything <laughs> otherwise. Oh, I can't say 
1997 Romeo and Juliet is awesome, but you can say that's awesome. Come on. I didn't say it wasn't awesome. I mean, okay, it's not my cup of tea. But... I did. I said Romeo that 97. The no, no, no. That I mean, I think it's it right I think it's silly. I, but... I that's why it's though, awesome. Josh, yeah. I will say, Josh, Heather agrees with you and loves that version it's of Romeo great. and Juliet. I like it because it's so ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I like it. See, I'm sorry, but if I want ridiculous, I will watch Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Like, that is yeah. like what I would do. But that's I a, want ridiculous. I mean, that's why, like, from from growing up with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, like, I can't like Charles Martinet. You know, he's great as Mario, but like, for me, Mario's voice is Captain Lou Albano. Because I mean, it, that's just what he should sound like if he's All an I Italian guy of. from Brooklyn. Is his drug PSA? <laughs> I Basically know. saying you're gonna go to hell. <laughs> I mean, it's the '80s. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, uh, I don't even know what we were talking about. We were Stupid, talking about D- Disney movies. Crappy Disney movies. That's yeah. right. Um, so I don't. Disney. I I haven't seen either of the movies. I don't know if I'm gonna see. I don't know if I'm gonna see them. No, I've already seen those movies. I was thinking or Lion about King. Going like I, <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about going to see Toy Story on Friday. Um, like I, especially with Disney like, Plus coming in the fall, I might just wait. Yeah. There you go. Because by that point, like they should be out of the theaters by then and ready to go on Disney Plus. Yeah. Plus, yeah, yeah like, that's the I mean, from what we've seen in Lion King, like, I already know how Lion King goes. It's going to be a shot for shot remake. Uh, I, I have also heard one of, the, prepared. one of the problems with that movie is like when you're doing like when you're doing, you know, traditional animation kind of a thing, you can make all sorts of, you know, awesome colors and like a very nice palette and everything. When you're making it photorealistic, animals are designed to blend in with their surroundings. So it's oh, a... so there's no, there isn't going to be any lime green no. around Scar during Be Prepared. No, it is. A, it's like a, a next gen video game, like a next gen first person shooter, where it's lots of just dusty brown everywhere. Open rain. Yep. Mm. Yeah, we are. We are getting storms. Yeah, yeah. So. There is a severe thunderstorm warning. Um, right now. Yep. And a special weather statement. Yep. But yeah, really strong thunderstorms. So if, if we storms. suddenly go out, folks, uh, that's why. Sorry. <laughs> Come at me. So. Yep. Uh, Storm. But to wrap up the news, um, Harry Potter Wizards Unite is out. Yes. Uh, apparently has a lot more depth than Pokemon Go, uh, so I may have not given it the credit it kind of deserves. Um, I know. I'm not going to play it you... still. I know a few of our friends are playing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was talking with Heather about it at breakfast this morning, and she says she likes it. Um, So I I may give it a try. Um, It depends on how much it zaps my battery. Yeah. And because I won't use it on data, like automatically will not use it on data. Yeah. But I have Wi-Fi pretty much anywhere I go. Mm -hmm. So... I may do it that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what Megan does with Pokemon Go. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, but I I will be I will be trying it um, sometime soon. But. Yeah. I don't know. Other other news. Uh, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion is on Netflix. I did see that. If you want to watch a really weird anime, I hey, did hear that. It's good though. <laughs> it's good. Have you watched it all the way through? I haven't. I don't think I. I know I watched a good majority of it. Because for a lot of it, you're just like, oh, this is Max fighting monsters, and then at the end, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. this was about something totally different. So yeah, I, which, I again, know that I right saw. My I was gonna say so. Zeno Gears, the kind of, <laughs> kind of. Because the monsters are called angels. Oh I was going to say, so it's basically, a lot, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's a, lot a lot of Bible references. Re- a lot and... of religious reference. A lot of psych- uh, psychology and philosophy. Yeah. 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 I remember I watched a lot of it in college. I'm not sure if I got it's to not, It's not a very long. It's only like 26 episodes. Yeah, but we jumped around a lot. 
with what we were watching. So, nice. but I think, I think I did finish it though. I remember I really liked it. So I may have to go back and rewatch. It's a classic as far as anime goes. Yeah. And like I said, it's right up my alley. So if you like really weird, pretentious stuff that takes itself super seriously, <laughs> there you go. Oh, so that's... it is exactly right up your alley. That's oh, what. Yeah. It's, that's what anime. Teenage, it's angsty teenagers piloting Max <laughs> with oh. all the pseudo religious and philosophical mm-hmm. BS. Why? Why? It's it's number one, what society is giving teenagers control of giant robots like that? Uh, dystopian yeah apparently neo tokyo or whatever apparently yeah one that's been obliterated and basically there's only like a couple million people left in the world because the world's been destroyed already kind of yeah so it's a matter of if you can run one you're running it yeah i I mean to be to be clear i i have the same problem with like teenagers always being the chosen one in in like american young adult fiction too which like i know that's the target demographic for that. Uh flipping every video game. Well that too. Yeah. It's I like Final Fantasy twelve literally added Van as the main character because they're like, oh our, our main character being like thirty four is too old yep. for our demographic. We need like an eighteen year old pretty boy. Which you know might and I will say that the despite the fact that now I'm in the demographic of a van, basically. Uh I felt this way 10 years ago. So it's not just me being, you know, oh, well, well Sean, mean, Sean's Crunchy now in the demographic that they would consider Link. too old. Link is just a, he was just a little boy. Well, in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Well, and in some of the other games. Even when he's an adult, he's not like old. No, it, adult Link is Still. supposed to be like 17. And it's like, exactly. why? why? Pokemon, you're just a kid running around. Th- yeah, you're. 10. That's the one that really irritates me. Ab- abusing monsters. Like, wh- in you're what ten. world do we let ten-year-olds go running around the entire countryside? <laughs> because by themselves. Because Kanto is supposed to be like one of the big regions of Japan, right? So it basically be like, oh, we're gonna let uh, it basically like we're gonna let a ten-year-old run around the state of Massachusetts, uh, unsupervised with basically you know, monsters. And they're going to use those monsters to beat up other kids' monsters. Yeah. 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 Nothing immoral about this. No. That's why... Uh, Nothing unethical about it. That's why I, I thought it was really interesting how they did... No uh, red flags for the, any the movie. type of psychopathy at all with animal abuse. Yeah. Um, um, no red I, flags. I realize PETA wanted to stop Pokemon. Well, PETA made their own bootleg game in which you play yeah. as the Pokemon and you like beat the ever living daylights out of the owners, Ooh, out of I'd the trainers. That game. I didn't know yeah. that was a, I'd play that. Yeah, that was made by PETA. Well, considering <laughs> PETA takes and steals and youth, never mind, I'm not finishing that. We're, 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 we're not going. going there. Yep. Yep. So. But yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, it's always something like the whole, you know, little kids saving the world thing. It's like, eh. Star Wars, Luke's what, like 17, 18? And New Hope. Yeah. Probably. I mean, that gets... Eh. I mean, and he was, what, 8, 9 when he was actually, like... I mean, Va- not Luke, but Vader. We Vader. don't talk about that movie. Anakin? Yeah. Now that's that pod w- racing. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll do a flip. That's a good trick. <laughs> Just, no, just those movies aren't that bad. They're not good, but they're not that. Bad. No, um, I think it, I mean, what I I do think um, like the age range in like episode two and three, like at least feel somewhat realistic. Like how Obi-Wan feels like he's kind of like late 20s, early 30s, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that feels realistic for like I'm in over my head and I have to train somebody and this this person is just beyond my capabilities. And yeah. they're a problem. Uh, so yeah, my, this kid hates sand. I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one, I think I I think I like the like if if the kid is going to be like gifted, kind of a thing. Whether like a you know like powered or whatever, 
I think it's more interesting for them to like how Deadpool two was where because they're a kid, like impulse control yeah, might be right. an issue. Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, the prequels are kind of like that. They are. I mean, that's, a, that's basically little... what they're about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I think that's more interesting than kids being like, I'm going to save the world. Like, no, you know, you well, know. even, even look good omens, right? Yes. The Antichrist is just, he's just a kid. He's just a kid. And he's like, oh, <laughs> awesome. I have this. And like, he starts off thinking, you know, you, you're thinking like, oh, well, maybe it won't be that bad. Yeah. And then it just like the power, you know, because uh, abso- like, oh, absolute you're power. Not be my friends, you're going to be my friend. Absolute power corrupts. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so like, but then, uh, although when I, so this is spoilers for people that haven't watched it. So cover your ears or read the book yeah. or read the book. I guess. Uh, so I, I did enjoy the fact that like when he got like that, even his hellhound was like, Oh no, <laughs> too spooky yeah. for me. got to run away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, you're, you know, you're bad when like actual demons are running away from you. Like, Oh, I don't, I don't uh. <laughs> Well, he kind of messed up on the hellhound from the get go. He did. That was kind of a, oh, an but that, accident. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. We're done. And then yeah. Spider-Man was there. What the yep. hell? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was the best part. Yeah. Uh, which, which is not to say Spider-Man, but uh, Tom Holland just like there in the background, just yeah. like doing push-ups or whatever. Just Tom Holland. Yeah. Was, he does that for some weird... He's in England, of course. He does some... I he just he's... wandered onto the set and nobody kicked him off. He just he's wandered in... onto the set and started spoiling movies. <laughs> I think he's in a... He's in like a Final Fantasy 14 commercial or something where is he yeah it's like a uh like a buddy of his it's like oh hey you know hey you want to play some final Fantasy 14 or whatever and tom's like doing push-ups and he's like i'm getting ready he's like i'll let you know when i'm ready he's like you we're just playing video games you don't have to get ready he, like, leaves. <laughs> <laughs> he's like you don't have to train you don't have to physically train for final fantasy 14 i don't whatever <laughs> yeah so uh so yeah, that pretty much wraps up this week's news. Oh, it's Hannibal Burris is in it in the commercial with him. Yeah. Oh, that guy's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, why don't we transition to talking about what's happening this week in Eight Bit Adventures? Yes. All right. So tomorrow night, Cadence of High Rule. Gonna play more of that. I have beaten one boss. Uh, the Gliakin Spiel. Which I, I love it. I love all the bosses are musical puns. Uh, I've I've looked I've looked up all the bosses. So there's the uh, bass guitar most night. Uh, there is the uh, what is it? Go maracas. Uh, there's the aforementioned Gliakin spiel. Um, and then the uh, Wiz Robo. So I'm um, going to play more of that. Uh, there is no uh, Tales of Jumora stream this week, um, as I uh, have all sorts of plans that came up. Um, I was going to do a world building stream, but there's not really enough time. Um, but instead, uh, Friday night, uh, Megan and I will be recording Berkshire Bites. Um, so it will go up late this week. That is uh, because I believe we're going to be talking about the old forge. Yes. Uh, so... Uh, we, we, we're basically doing a, we went to the we're going to be doing a couple trips to the forge this week um so we figured we'll wait uh are you and then do that we might have a special yeah. guest we might not i don't know what her schedule is like so <laughs> it all it kind of depends on that but yeah um i think that's it as far as podcasts go uh yeah. and as far as comics comic 3-3 is up um, I finally, uh, fully switched over to clip studio paint. Um, I'm at the point now where I now have a buffer. So next week's comic has already been completed. Woohoo. So, uh, yeah. Um, Buffers really, really enjoying, uh, working with clip studio paint over, uh, Photoshop and illustrator. Um, also to the point that like, I'm also able to do like a book layout, natively as part of the process kind of a thing so it also removes indesign from the process as well Mm -hmm. um since i'm not really working with text so much as images um 
so yeah uh i think the sale might be over but it was 50 the software was 50 percent off so that was that was a big thing mm. um, but yeah uh so if you are wondering what that is uh so 8-bit adventures started out as a comic that i did uh and then grew into a brand that now encompasses so much more than that but yeah. it's about a bunch of video game npcs that are just trying to live their life in a little video game world um, that's kind of on the outskirts. So, like, it's not really attached to any games per se, um, but there have been some weird happenings of, like, other games bleeding in a little bit uh, that we saw in Chapter 1, um, and mm -hmm. we're going to see some more of that kind of a thing. Uh, and possibly other weird, not-quite-video-game stuff bleeding in, uh, mm -hmm. as was um, implied in uh this week's comic as uh there was a big old zambi hand coming up out of the ocean with uh with a hole in the hand and there's an eyeball in the hole uh so seems normal yeah yeah absolutely yeah um so a little insider info uh it, it is a critical role reference um and we'll learn more about it, it so it's, it's not going to be ukutoa obviously because uh it, it will be a parody of something that is native to 8-bit adventures uh but um yeah we're gonna learn more about that soon so and it'll tie into a uh, a different region in the 8-bit adventures world so azeroth uh no <laughs> Although we already have a tie to Azeroth between uh, the Illidan cameo. Um, Speedy is technically a crossover with Azeroth and Cornflakes is definitely a crossover with Azeroth. Uh, yes. As she yes. came from Azeroth. Cornflakes. Uh, as, love, as a love of uh, my life. grand tinker of Nomergon. <laughs> because, you know, oh, she's yes. a level 120 mage with engineering. That's, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Um, that pretty much wraps. Uh, there will be a Monty comic this week. Yay! So that will also, so those comics are also going to be swapped over to Clip Studio Paint, um, to better, uh, and they will probably be in color from now on, um, as it's Yay! much easier to, because it's so much easier to actually get a comic out, um, I'm not fighting with the software to just get a comic done. That means that they'll not only be higher quality, but it'll be easier to do color as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Yay. Um, that is going to wrap it up for this week in 8-Bit Adventures. So why don't we move into Quest Log? Yes. Quest Log is where we talk about what kind of geeky stuff we did this week. <laughs> and and wrote in our quest log what we did. <laughs> so yeah, Courtney, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, Stardew, Stardew, and more Stardew Woo! paired with Critical Role. Um, I I made a new I I started a new game. Um, God, I think it really was just like a week ago. It was. Um, because you did you did yeah. bring it up last week. Yeah. So yeah. um. Just today, I got into winter of year one, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to do a speed run to get as many points for the grandpa's uh, evaluation at the mm -hmm. end of year two. So I'm working on finishing the community center as well. So that's kind of been what I've been at, and then watching Critical Role, um, catching up. Um I still have a little bit to go because my sleep schedule is all wonky um, with school and work and everything. So, but other than that, though, it's uh, it's been a quiet week for me, games-wise. Um, I've brought my Switch with me everywhere. I just haven't gotten a chance to play. <laughs> yeah. Unless I'm at home. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, that's that's it's been a quiet week for me. So, what about you, Josh? Oh, you know. 
Just playing Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition on my Switch. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. So you liking fun. it? Yeah, it's a JRPG. It's yeah. a JRPG. Yeah. How <laughs> how are you liking the Switch? It's fine. It's video games. That's kind of where I'm at in my life. Video games, video games, video yeah. games. Uh, do you have a pro controller? No. Okay. I just play on... The, as I actually use it almost... Ex- I'm surprised at myself. I use it handheld almost exclusively. Okay. Yeah. I like sit here in my chair and like... I'll spin around, put my feet up on my bed, and I'll just like... Nice. Play yeah. It. So I don't want to go nice. through the trouble of playing on the TV out in the living room. Or yeah. It's like it's that. nice and handheld. That's that's I've never actually plugged my switch in to a dock unless I'm like at Sean's and I have to charge my switch. Yeah. Um yeah, I play exclusively in handheld. Yeah, it's the only game I've been playing. Uh other geeks I'm still reading Ship of Magic. It's a long book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Almost eight hundred pages. So yeah. <laughs> do like a chapter a night before I go to bed and nice. Just get a little, you know, slog through it. There you uh, go. Hey, I think I've it been writing, me... writing for my D and D game. I when uh, my group did Yay? something I really wasn't expecting them to do. Uh, really? I, no, I no. I honestly thought you guys would understand how important it was for you to complete your mission and to follow through with it and not just run away. So. For the listener's benefit, that was not privy to this session. Yeah. Uh, what happened is, this is what happens when yours truly so, panics, and then somebody yep. says something, and then I go, basically, "Hey, that's a great idea. Let's do that." Uh, and then oh, over the past couple yeah. sessions, they've been dealing with this giant, this this red dragon, an adult red dragon. Yeah. And the red dragon's just like, "Get on my back. You're coming with me. You basically have no choice because I know you all. DM knows you have like no hit points left. You have no spells. There's not much you can do about it." Yeah. So. Yep. Dragon flies him back to the lair and is like, gets all his minions, is like, hey, just go throw them in the cells. I'm going to trade them to the UNT for like treasures and stuff that they're digging up out of this thing. So, well, and also, uh, uh, I'm going to take their stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's going to take all your magic items because that was the big thing. A greedy red dragon. Yeah. 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 I played it like a red dragon. He wants all the magic stuff, wants all the treasure. Yeah. He's very vain and thinks he's way more powerful and strong. And then, and honestly, there wasn't much you guys could do about it yeah. at that point. <laughs> well, but yeah. I had planned it that there was a way for you to escape and whatever and get your stuff back and all that. Thinking, like, you would put that together in your head. Instead, part of the party <laughs> decides to start fighting the dragon and its minions. Not, I made it clear. I'm like, there's, like, 15 minions on one side of you and the dragon on the other side of you. Trying to make it clear that this isn't a fight you're going to win. Correct. Uh, <laughs> that being said, my brother the dwarf decides to start fighting the minions on brand. On brand. Which is fine. Absolutely on brand. Yeah. Whatever. We get to uh Sean's turn uh on his lizard folk ranger and he has this conch that they got a long time ago from the giants that'll take them to the maelstrom, which is the, the storm giant base at the bottom of the ocean. Blows it, they teleport out. Oh so now, magic conch. Will we finish this campaign? Maybe someday. (laughs) But not today, apparently. Well, there was a countdown for what was going on, where they were. There was definitely an important time thing. Something would happen if they didn't get to it in time. I purposely brought them... Well, I brought you very close to where you needed to be on purpose via the dragon. That was also me getting you closer to where you needed to be and skipping a lot of the jungle travel. Yeah. So fast travel by dragon. Well, I think I think I had just gotten so used to how brutal things have been that I was like, oh, I don't I don't know if point, Josh would provide an, us, an out for us. Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, that, that's know. where Sean was thinking, like Sean was like, uh, I don't I don't see I've a way out of this. And brutal, I don't but I've always given you guys an out. And, and yeah, see, you kept giving them an out that you you let them keep the conch <laughs> all that time ago. Wow. No, you forgot about. And that. I, I didn't. No, even... I did not. I, I knew he had it. I, I, uh, I, I thought it was clear at how important it was to do what you guys needed to do. I to did not even consider the possibility until it was brought up, and I went, "Well, I mean, fine. it's it's not but a now, great option, but it's on brand." <laughs> whatever. 
what was going to happen on the island is just going to happen. Yep. And if you get there, if you get there, you'll. Oh, you'll my let, character will be making sure we get back matter. there. It doesn't matter. It actually allows me to do a lot of really weird, strange things that I want to do and just do what. It, this kind of is nice. It kind of allows me to break my story and just be weird for a bit. Yep. Which is going to be fun. Things. This is gonna this get next weird. session. This next session is gonna be a lot of probably almost exclusively role play. Yeah, this is gonna get cool. weird. I'm gonna okay. make it weird. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm totally gonna go into uh, pretentious, uh, pseudo religious, philosophical. <laughs> I'm gonna do all the things I love. Oh goodness! And just I'm just gonna mess with your guys' characters psychologically. That's. That's what I'm going to do. For... Dude, my yep. character is already messed up psychologically. Yeah, and I'm going to destroy what's left of your psyche. You're going to turn her into a bubbling, babbling infant. Well, I, I've already said we just need to go back and finish that mech that the fire giants were working on. Uh, and then and then <laughs> we, right. we take on the we take on the nothing or whatever in the ultimate Xenogears <laughs> death match. Yes, the night serpent is what is being released. Ooh, ooh, that's ooh, that's spicy. It's something that's in D and D, but I'm changing it to be something else a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it inspired me to do something else. Uh, so, you know yeah, what? I, so, so I've been I've been I, writing that and thinking about that. I will say I I do I do like that idea better than the just the Oblivion was released like like you had originally kind of been thinking. I mean, it's 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 towards it's, that end. Let's put it this way: it's more Perkins like. Since that's yeah. what actually happened in Dice Camera Action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just the nothing, but it's nice everyone will bring the nothing, essentially. Yeah. Allowed to do what it's going to do. It will just consume all reality and then eat itself this and, will... start, and start a new reality. This will be interesting. <clears throat> this will be very interesting. So all we got to do is we have to find Acquisitions, Inc., the C team. <laughs> Out in space. <laughs> oh, Spoilers. Goodness. Spoilers. They're out in space. Uh, <laughs> Guys, my character no, I love needs it. I love to get it. back I'm, to her sisters I'm, and her family. Yeah, Everybody I'm, on the island's dead, just so you know. Probably. Yeah. Everybody you guys left on the island is flipping dead. Nobody survived. You guys escaped, so there's your consequence. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hey, guess what? So, that means one less boss to, to fight it. in Dragon Heist if we ever get around to that. Because <laughs> I presume Jarl Axel's not there. Or, or he my, was there. My no, throat literally there. just oh. went into my stomach. Oh. <laughs> Clearly what we need to do is we need to build that giant robot and we just pick up all the bosses that have been problematic and just throw them at the Night Serpent. Here, Xanathar, fastball special. Woo! Fine, you can go there. So basically, I'll give you a little preview of what it's going to be. So basically, the Night Serpent was released, and Leovin kind of was able to stop it. Kind of. He had to do... Basically, he had to die to do it, and let Lathander take over his body as an avatar. So basically, Lathander's there, kind of holding it at bay, but can only do it for a little bit of time. Okay. So basically, there's just this big, like, black dome over the whole island. And when you go in, there's going to be this, like, like it's basically like a space-time rift. Because of how powerful this Night Serpent is. It just tears through reality wherever it goes. Nice. So when if you go in, it's just going to allow me to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I can just change scenes and locations at, at a whim. Because it's like, yeah, we're in this weird space-time rift now. I like it. It's gonna it. be a lot of fun. And yeah. at any moment and any <clears throat> moment I might ask you guys to make a save to see if your mind can handle being in there and not just tear itself apart. And you totally lose your sense of self and individualism. Yeah, we gotta find a way to break your timeline. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> so No, I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> basically thinking like, hmm, these are abstract concepts, you say. How would how would it basically someone from a society that doesn't really have abstract concepts handle that? <laughs> I'd just be like, sense of self. I don't really have a sense of self, anyways. <laughs> but because yeah, it's just the inside of it's just this going to be 
all the souls of all the dead things all mixed together with no real sense of individual self or anything, all just powering this crazy night serpent. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, so you say a, a Terran space that, time, like, you say. Keep, keeping your, well, it is, I'm just nope. making it weird. Nope. Does, does nope. that mean? This also helps nope. me talk through it. Does that mean that there are like bubbles of the past? Keeping your own sense of self in this is going to be very difficult. But this is me going like, hmm, is there a way for Darastrix to just reach into a past time bubble and pull out and basically do a do a quantum uh, quantum leap kind of a th not quantum oh, leap, God. but a quantum basically, jump, quantum heist. All, all your memories are going to be shared with everybody else in there. Oh, boy. So everybody will be privy to like everything, like, you know, and you with everybody else just nice. because you're all kind of in this thing together. Sweet. Or it's just all kind of merged and weird. Awesome. I'm just I'm totally going weird with this. I, yeah. I just want to do something really weird. You are just, weird. You know, Again, you, the thing is, though, like, okay, Basically, I'm just so looking for a way to, to dare Strix reach into the past and pull past gigs out into the future. Yes. Or Maybe. into the present. No. Yeah. See, the thing is, like, I I knew that this campaign when I got involved. <laughs> Well, first off, I knew the hijinks that happened. Before. I was like, oh, um, un undead hordes. And that's then, terrifying, but not weird and terrifying enough as but then, existential crisis of losing your individual self. Yeah, yeah. You you told me that this was going to, you wanted to break characters. Um, and now and, I can do it. And I knew <laughs> this tricks. was going to be dark and twisty. I knew it. Wouldn't be the first I time Sean's caused dude. chaos. No, no, just, just to, yeah. this is why you need to warn somebody before they get into a campaign. If you want it to be super dark and twisty. It's fun. You knew. It's fun. I knew. I told you. If you, well, can't, make it, if you can't make people feel feelings in your D&D &D game, then what the hell is the point? That's how I. True. If I can't see Sean curling into a fetal position <laughs> when I'm describing what's about to happen. Then, <laughs> yeah, that was one of my favorite things ever. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, and yeah, that's what it's all about for me. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, just, just want to let you know, Courtney, that the rest of the group was the only reason why Darastrix didn't jump out uh, before then, <laughs> like when he got separated. Yeah, because I thought about that, too. It's like when the yeah. dragon showed up, it's just like hand over your stuff. Also, your. Also, I'm gonna eat your animal companion. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> out. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there is tricks out. That. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll I'll roll up a new character to conclude this arc, and then you all go find Daristrix back in Waterdeep or wherever. <laughs> He'll be hanging out at the alchemist shop. <laughs> and I'll just keep throwing player characters as I re as I semi retire them. Just keep throwing them at a physics shop. <laughs> to the point where it's like cheers where fizz now has a bar of alchemical beverages and every, like, all all of my characters are just hanging out there <laughs> yeah. anyway yeah. so let's keep this going though sean what have you been playing i've been playing dauntless yes uh, and of course. basically it uh <laughs> i also played a little bit of stardew valley with courtney our, our sort of yeah. joint game um yeah. and obviously cadence of i rule during the last uh two streams last week um but yeah, mostly Dauntless outside of that. Um, pretty good. I managed to get an exotic. So there are six. Um, so think of them like unique items from Diablo, where rather than, excuse me, giving you like one of the set skills or whatever, they give you unique effects. Um, although unlike Diablo, they're not, I guess they're not designed to be kind of overpowered with certain builds. They're just mm -hmm. designed to be different um which i don't know if that makes it worth the uh kind of rare material like extra exceedingly rare and legendary materials that you have to uh farm to craft them um but i don't know uh the helmet that i have doesn't actually work very well with the repeaters which is what i use uh because what it does is so like monster hunter you have a stamina bar and as you use abilities your stamina bar goes down when you don't use stuff, uh, it re it recharges. Um, this creates a like as you deal damage, you get a stamina shield. So uh, it gives you like temporary stamina that gets burned off before actual stamina. Um, so it's interesting, uh, 
but it's not really useful for the kind of builds that I'm doing. Um, because uh, it also doesn't, it like removes any particular um, skills that I need for my build. So uh, there, at, it, currently in the game, there's three helmets and there's three weapons. Um, so not all weapons have an exotic to them. There's uh, there's a sword which does like life steal called hunger. There's a spear called the God Hand, which that ability is instead of uh, firing off missiles like the spears typically do, like of of energy, you fire a continuous laser beam until your ammo runs out. It's also bugged right now, where uh, as you're firing the laser beam, you're stuck in place and you have infinite ammo. So. Yeah, you have to get hit by the monster to stop doing that stuff. To, to actually move again. Um, yeah. Uh, it's causing all sorts of problems with uh, with games. Where, like, if you do that and you're in a place where the monster can't reach you, you cause the monster to... Um, it's like a vade bug in Warcraft. Where, uh, like, if you're at a place and you're, you have, like, a, a mob tagged and it can't reach you, um, like, you'll, it'll still hold aggro, but, like... <clears throat> it'll evade bug out and then it'll start regaining hit points. Uh, that's what the monster does in Dauntless with this. Mm. Um, and then the third one is a fire-based hammer that instead of doing the normal like shotgun blast that hammers do in that game, um, you throw, uh, you lob fireballs like Mario style. Um, and I guess if you do like a ground slam, you're supposed to like release this like lava elemental that glides along the ground and blows into stuff. Um, so yeah, I want to pick that hammer up to throw fireballs all <laughs> over the place. Uh, so yeah, um, but yeah, just playing that farming monsters. Um, Seems I'll good. see, uh, in theory, they're supposed to be releasing some new stuff fairly soon. Um, cause the thing is like, I only have two monsters left to unlock, uh, and there's not really much of an end game at this point. So it might be a case where we get to that point and then, you know, play maybe like one or two nights a week or so instead of like every night mm -hmm. um, and focus on other stuff uh, until like Monster Hunter comes out. Speaking of other stuff, hey, uh, it's your boy Steam. We got a sale going That's on. That's right. <laughs> I've, it's like I've been looking at that and I forgot to put it in the show notes. Yeah, Steam Summer Sale is going on. Uh, 14 out of 15 items on my wish list are on sale. Oh, really? Oh, I don't wow. know if I'm going to pick any of them up. <laughs> because, what are they? I'm curious. Um, What's on your wish list? What, so, let's see if I can open up Steam without... Uh, let's see, I might have to... Yep, can it, I see your wish list? I don't think so. I think if he shares uh, it and makes it public, you uh, might be able to. Let's see. Store. Isn't it similar to like an Amazon wish list? I don't know if it's public or not. Anyway, so a uh, hat in time, mm -hmm. uh, cross code, ghost of a tail, which oh, I think we've talked about before. Ooh, is that uh, on sale? I'm uh, Thirty-three percent off, so it's on sale for sixteen bucks. Ooh, I think I'm gonna pick that up. Uh, Wizard of Legend, uh, just shapes and beats, which is it's kind of like a, an asteroid like shooter. Just uh, and shapes and beats. Uh, it's literally just shapes and beats. Just shapes and beats, bro. War groove. Which, uh, if I do pick that up, it'll be on Switch, but I basically put it on my mm -hmm. Steam wish list to remind myself to pick it up. Uh, Chrono Trigger. Have you ever played Chrono Trigger? Uh, I have it on DS. Have you ever played it, like, through? No. Oh. So, um, it's 50% it's off. Uh, Secret of Mana, on sale, 50% off for $20. That's the sale price. That's Is that the, the remake they did? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I might just pick up Collection of Mana instead, if I'm going to do better, that. Probably better. Probably better. Yeah. Uh, E-Shade. That's like a very casual, it's like a painting. It's not really a game so much as like, it's this very like quiet, sort of like Mediterranean town. Mm. Uh, and you go around and just paint. Okay. So <clears throat> it's, it's just like a casual, relaxing kind of thing. <laughs> um, Tales of Vesperia, Definitive Edition. Oh, that's fifty percent off. It's a fun game uh, if you like Tales games. Forager. Um, it's like a very. I don't know if I describe it as like low res or something. It's it's a very uh, simple art style. Um, 
like the line work is smooth and everything, but it's very blocky. Um, but it's like a one of those like survival crafting farming uh, fight monster kind of games. Um, Dungreed, which looks like a kind of a side scroller uh, dungeon crawling, mm-hmm. maybe roguelite type game. Mm-hmm. Uh, TikTok, a tale for two, is which this is like a TikTok app. No. Oh. No, uh, no. TikTok is a game. <laughs> it's um, um, it looks like a two-player mystery game, where it's a uh, very muted art style, um, like lots of Raven iconography in there, um, and you're just trying to like solve a. I think it's like a murder mystery. Um, Equilinox, which is just another like voxel. Um, I think it's like. Kind of like you you have animals and you're trying to get species populations to flourish and stuff like that. Um, mm. And Islanders, which is just like a city building Sims kind of a game, but it's all just on an island. Nice. Um, and it's like there's no, I don't know, like you unlock stuff, but uh, yeah, they call it the they call it like an indie puzzle building game. But, like, there's yeah. no real, like, like there's no PvP or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's kind of more care, like SimCity no in that regard. <clears throat> but, like, the whole point is, like, <laughs> as you build stuff, you unlock more types of things that you can build. So. I don't know. Oh. Mostly stuff that, I, like, I thought was kind of interesting. But. Yeah. But, yeah. Of those, probably Wargroove will be the only one that I realistically pick up. Uh, yeah, and I'll not. do it on Switch. Yeah, so that I can get much. points. Yeah. Not much on this. Apparently there's also some weird thing about like specific teams. And if your team yeah. wins, like you have a chance to win stuff. I don't know. I saw there was team Corgi. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what team I'm on. I don't know. Whatever. But. So yeah. Cool. So fun, fun. that is going to wrap it up for this week. Oh yeah. Uh, Go buy a bunch of games that will sit in your library that you won't ever play. Yeah. <laughs> so uh if you want to see uh any other content from 8-bit adventures including podcasts streams artwork comics uh head on over to 8-bitadventures.com if you want to help support that content uh and support <clears throat> excuse me um content that was made possible uh through support uh, such as berkshire bites um our food podcast um, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash 8bitadventures. Uh, big shout out and thank you to all of our current patrons. Uh, without your help, uh, I would not be able to do things like host all of our various podcasts and the website. So, yeah. Uh, our opening theme is One Up by Professor Shy Guy. You can find his work over at professorshyguy.bandcamp.com. Woo. We're going to sign off before the storms really start rolling in. So uh, yeah. have fun, everyone. Happy gaming, and enjoy your pie cake. Bye, everybody. Do it. Do it.